Greetings and welcome back to 50 Shades of Beige. Guess what? We've hit a fantastic milestone, a small one, albeit a very small one, but it was an important one to me personally. We hit 300 subscribers, that's right, 300 subs. I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of you all for liking and subscribing and commenting. It wasn't long ago that I was considering stopping uh, making videos on a consistent basis due to some personal issues and we had the flood in the basement and so on and so forth and everything was kind of telling me well maybe this isn't going to work out but you guys commenting on the videos and liking and sharing them with your friends has been a great encouragement to me and it's been so fun having conversations with you guys about all kinds of tech from smartphones to gaming pcs to retro stuff and giving you guys recommendations and tech tips along the way in the comments so thanks to all of you, my initial 300, moving on here. So as you can see, I've still got the box for the Thermalrite Frozen Note uh, all-in-one liquid cooler on the bench here. The reason being is my 300 subscriber, Jdeep, or Jadeep, sorry if I butchered your name, he left a comment on my most recent video asking for some more details about, about the benchmarks and so on. And I'm sure if you've already seen the video, you'll know that I kind of brushed past the benchmarks uh, pretty quickly there because the fact of the matter is I don't have a ton of money. Most of the stuff you see on the channel ends up getting sold off within a couple of weeks to fund bringing in more stuff to show you all. So I don't have thermal probes and you know fancy monitoring software or anything like that to benchmark. Um, in fact, it's hard enough just to keep a consistent ambient temperature in the basement here. But we're gonna do our best today. I've uh, got my ambient temperature set. I've got the 360 mil AIO saturated. Uh, and I just wanna give you a brief overview of the testing methodology, but uh, this is all gonna be industry standard benchmarking software. We're gonna do various scenarios, gaming, content creation, and multitasking. Um, the system will always be carefully configured to eliminate variables. In fact, in this case, um, we're really gonna try our best to just focus on the cooler, despite the fact we're really doing CPU testing. We're gonna run each test multiple times to ensure the results are reliable, and then we're going to average them out and then also give a median of you know, however many we've got. So in this case, for doing thermal testing, I'm gonna run each test three times. I think that's fair. Unfortunately, I don't have hours to sit here. I'm not Gamers Nexus. I can't sit here for three hours and do benchmarks. Let's go ahead and dive in to the benchmarks. All right, and here we are running burn-in test 10.2. We're doing the max CPU test. And as you can see here, we're using Intel XTU instead of hardware monitor because I believe it's more accurate. There are some questions online about the accuracy of hardware monitor with the 12900K for some reason. As you can see here, we're at 200 watts on the package. Pretty good. Our utilization's at 100%. Core frequency topping out at around 4.9. Package temperature is at a nice, calm, cool 75 Celsius. And XTU has not reported any thermal throttling or power limit throttling to this point. So, pretty good. I think. XTU is holding it at 200 watts, which is weird because I thought PL1 was like 150 watts for this CPU, but maybe it's 200. It's kind of weird because it can vary by motherboard as well, but clearly there's a 200 watt limit set somewhere. When I turn on Intel Speed Optimizer, I've seen it go up to around 250 watts. But yeah, so far holding good, going up a little bit. 77C, still not, still not bad. All right, let's go ahead and fast forward here a few minutes and see where we're at. All right, and here we are about eight minutes into our burn-in test. We're still hanging out around 77C on the package. CPU utilization has been pegged at 100%. Max core frequency is still 4.92 gigahertz. And you can see our temperature ranges here in burn-in test. All are basically, you know, to be expected, and we've had zero errors so far. Our AIO cooler is chilling. I can feel the hot air coming off the back of it. It's not terribly loud. There's no pump whine. There's no annoyingly loud fans. And there's just a little bit of a whooshing sound that you get, and that's pretty much gonna be the case with any AIO cooler. 
that you get uh, because the air is moving past all those spins and that creates resistance. But yeah, overall looking great. We're gonna run this for a couple more minutes here and then move on to the next thing. All right, the burning test is done. We went for 10 minutes, we had no throttling, we stayed around 200 watts, we stayed around 77C, wasn't too loud as expected. All right, test passed, zero errors. Now we're gonna go for the big dog here. We're gonna turn on speed optimizer. All right, so we've got a pretty nice overclock here. It's gonna take our power limit up to 295 watts, which is insane. I'll be honest with you guys, I don't know of any regular run-of-the-mill 360 mil AIO that can handle 295 watts. Uh, that's just insane, but we're going to give it a try here. I've got a feeling we're going to get some thermal throttling though, and that is what it is. Um, just to kind of protect the CPU, I'm going to change the settings of the test because I don't want this thing to go straight up to 100C. All right, three, two, one, go. And we're already thermal throttling. Okay, 93, 91. Okay, it did overcome that. We're at a TDP of 250 watts. Not bad, 249. Package temperature's coming down quickly. And we're at 5.1 gigahertz on the P cores. And I'm assuming uh, four gigahertz on the E cores, although this doesn't show the E cores. No errors, which is good. 92C. This is about as hard as I would want to push this AIO. And really, for, for a budget all-in-one liquid cooler, I feel like a 250 watt max TDP on an Intel CPU, I feel like that's pretty reasonable. Not ideal, obviously we'd want more, but I'm giving her all she's got. Package temperature is kind of fluctuating up and down, but the, the, the important thing is the utilization and the core frequency is staying pretty consistent. It does bump down a little bit, but the thermal throttling option is not turning on and neither is power limit throttling. I really don't, want, don't know whether I'd want to run my CPU like this all the time. Uh, it sounds like an awful waste of energy. You can do an advanced tuning setting in XTU and get pretty close to the same performance, like about 90% of the same performance and run between 150 and 180 watts. And you're not wearing out your fans and your pump so fast and you have um, you know a much better time with your electric bill that's for sure all right I'm gonna go ahead and run these tests two more times I'm gonna give you the median and the average of the three tests and we'll put them up in a graph and then we'll move on to our next subject all right, let's have a look at some graphs, guys. So first and foremost, these are 10 minute runs running burn -in test 10.6 max temperature test. Uh, other than that, everything was left normal, okay? Um, I have my BIOS set up pretty simply. We're using default fan curves, and I have XMP turned on. Other than that, I changed nothing. So let's get right to it here. Uh, without XTU installed on the system, we averaged around 235 watts at the package, 87C over three runs, 10 minute long runs there. Once we installed XTU, for some reason, uh, the package power appeared to be, and I'm not positive it really was, but you know, over 10 minutes seemed pretty clear to me that we were throttled at 200 watts for the package. Uh, and that took our temperatures down to about 77 Celsius. And then when I turned on the performance tuning, which is like Intel's auto overclock feature, everything went off the rails <laughs> and we averaged around 93, 94 Celsius over three 10 minute runs. So then you might say, all right, is this a good AIO for me? Our friend JD Peer is buying a 13700K. I'd say if you're gonna run it, on the motherboard, just stock as it comes, you're probably gonna be just fine. It's not gonna cause you any problems. However, it is still at the end of the day, more of a budget AIO cooler. It's definitely not for enthusiasts that wanna do a lot of overclocking. 
and we basically found its limit 245-250 watts as Intel measures it as TDP mind you. So it certainly will handle the 13700K without an issue. I'm not sure that I would uh, want to dial in any hardcore overclocks with it though. Anyway, that's going to do it for now. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.